This is a thorough diminished scale guitar tutorial. The diminished scale, also called the octatonic scale, is widely used to create tension, to create a lack of obvious tonality, to modulate keys, or just to make things sound a little odd sometimes. As a guitarist, whether you're an improviser or a composer or a songwriter on the guitar, or if you're just interested in music theory, learning the diminished scale guitar shapes on the fretboard and learning how to practice and apply them can help you get out of ruts, can help you sound a little more interesting or modern or experimental when you're bored of your own playing, or it could be just the thing that's needed to accurately nail the chord changes when playing or composing over diminished chords or dominant seventh chords. We're gonna get into all of that. I'm gonna show you exactly how to start working on the diminished scale to get a basic understanding of it. And I'll even show you some steps that you can take to start working on the diminished scale on the guitar at an advanced level so you can take your guitar playing there in the future if you're so inclined. This is part of my scale mapping lesson series where I show the five scale shape positions of various scale types and how to map them out and work on them and apply them on the guitar. This diminished scale guitar lesson totally stands on its own, but check out that whole scale series if there are other scale types that you are interested in working on on the guitar. First, I'll explain what the diminished scale is, its structure, its theory, and I'll list some artists that use it. Then I'll show you how to first get started playing this really cool scale type on the guitar. The beginning steps of this are super easy and really fun. Then I'll explain how and why the diminished scale is used in actual music. After that, I'll show you the diminished scale guitar shapes on the fretboard and how to practice them to get them down and internalize them. It's a little odd. There's actually only two shapes in terms of playing the notes of, of this scale in a position. There's only two shapes, but you'll see that we actually want to play it in five different positions. So I'll show you that during that section. And lastly, I'll give you a series of exercises for improvising with the diminished scale on the guitar over a common chord progression. And I'll do a bunch of playing demonstrations and playing examples during that section so you can hear what it sounds like and hear the musical effect that it gets when playing the scale over certain chords in a chord progression. That's what we're gonna cover, let's dive in. By the way, I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome, please subscribe and follow. I have new videos every week. So this scale, the diminished scale, can be thought of as something called a synthetic scale, which means that it's artificially created. It's not from a diatonic scale. It's not related to a diatonic scale, which is our normal scale we think of in a key, the major scale, the minor scale, a seven note scale is a diatonic scale. And this is separate from that. It's kind of created and synthesized, breaking up the octave in a different number of notes in eight notes, and that's why it's also called the octatonic scale. It's more often called the octatonic scale when referring to it in the context of classical music or classical composition, and it's more often referred to as the diminished scale when referring to it in the context of jazz music or improvising. Artists and composers that have used this scale in their music include Rimsky-Korsakov. In fact, supposedly at one point people were referring to the diminished scale or the octatonic scale as the Rimsky-Korsakov scale. Check out Scheherazade the symphonic piece by Rimsky-Korsakov. If you don't know, that's one of my favorite uh, pieces of music. It's just absolutely beautiful, and the diminished scale is used in it. Also, Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky, Debussy, Ravel, these composers were using the diminished scale to get a certain effect in music, which I'm gonna talk about coming up next. Also, jazz musicians, name almost any well-known jazz musician. They probably use the diminished scale some more than others, like John Coltrane or Herbie Hancock use the diminished scale in their improvisations. And occasionally it comes up in more popular music. Frank Zappa was known to use it at one point. Radiohead had used it as one, at one point in a song. So we're gonna get into playing it here in one second, a very kind of simple introductory way that's really fun, but let's just explain the structure of it uh, because this, this is why it actually is quite easy to wrap our heads around this scale because it's a symmetrical scale, which means it just repeats itself over and over again. And anywhere you, it's kind of re a revolving door, anywhere you land on the, the diminished scale, it kind of looks the same as anywhere else. So that makes it easy to understand as a structure and you'll see why in a sec, but it also can be confusing when we're using it to know, uh, wait, where did I come from with, the, with this? You kind of end up in this area where you can land anywhere, which is what, how people are using it to modulate. Very similar to using diminished chords, which 
which I talk about in my really thorough diminished chords tutorial. So check that video out if you're interested in uh, learning about the harmony around this as well. But the structure of this scale is simply just a whole step and a half step. And then a whole step and then a half step and then a whole step and then a half step and then a, and that's it forever whole step half step whole step half step whole step half step and it just keeps going that way and when you do that you break up the octave with eight notes again why it's called the octatonic scale so i think of that as the main primary diminished scale whole step half step whole step half step that's how i think of it there are two diminished scales though because you can also start with the other note and go half step whole step half step whole step so i think of that as kind of a mode of the main diminished scale. That just helps me wrap my head around kind of a main way to think of it and play it and structure it and, and root myself on it. And then I'll think of the other one as a mode of it. But either way, you could just say, well, there's two ways to play the diminished scale. You go whole step, half step forever, or you go half step, whole step forever. Well, so let's go ahead and practice this. And like with any structure on the guitar, I always recommend that we play it along one string. Even if we're not gonna use it that way in music, just along one string is so straightforward. So it's gonna be really easy. Let's just start on something like C and let's go whole step half step whole step half step whole step half step whole step and then you get to just right away play it without any confusion and just get that sound in your ear and at first it starts to sound like a minor scale and then that's that diminished sound that's the diminished fifth right there off of C it's a tritone away and then you just keep going and it's kind of at first very surprising, like kind of unexpected, like, whoa, that note was down from what my ear thought it was going to be until you get used to it or ground yourself in it. Start working with it that way. Take any string, take any note, go whole step, half step, whole step, half step, and play around with listening to it that way. The other very straightforward way to work on this that's actually very practical, sounds really cool, and you can use it in your playing and your improvising and just work on this as a technique thing is to take four notes of the scale. <laughs> that little chunk right there where you got a half step, whole step, half step. Okay, so start on G, go half step, then whole step, then half step, and just take that as a little unit and slide into the second note. Okay, once you do that, crossing strings with a whole step is exactly four frets over one fret up. So if you can see here that my pinky landed on that last note of those four notes and then the same hand position the next fret over with my first the next string over with my first finger i can start that exact same thing over again and then again and then again okay i'm going to do it from g again so what i did in the intro of the video so that's a really cool thing to start doing specifically for guitar players because because of just the way it lays out now if you keep going you actually have to go up uh because of our tuning of our standard tuning on the guitar, you have to um, go up an extra fret when you're crossing over to the next string, if you're going from string three to two. But it's worth working on that to, to get it down, to go all the way from this G, all the way up to this F, just with that four note group. Let me do it one more time from the bottom to the top. Now, this is used, we're gonna talk later how it's used, but this is used over dominant seventh chords or over diminished chords to cause tension and often to resolve to something or modulate to something or tonicize something. Again, that kind of stuff is talked about in my diminished chords video as well, so check that out if you're interested. But if we treat this as a G7 chord and then play this diminished scale over it, and we'll talk more about that later in the video, how to work on it over a dominant seventh chord, but G7 often resolves to C. So what if I do this scale that we just did? And then I resolve to C. I just played like a D shape of C on the top there, so. Kind of fun just to hear it resolve to something so sweet and, and major sounding after doing such an odd scale. So how is the diminished scale being used in real music? How are composers and improvisers using it? In classical music, this scale was not widely used. It wasn't really introduced as part of the texture and vocabulary of musical composition in Western music until approaching the turn of the century around 1900 or a little bit before that. And that's when it started to be um, experimented with and became uh, a staple of getting a certain type of sound after that from many of the composers that I mentioned earlier, which many of them were these composers that were uh, early 
20th century composers and kind of branching away from the romantic era of music which the romantic era of music was still relying heavily on tonality and obvious tonal center and playing around with uh, functional harmony. The diminished scale can be used tonally, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but it also can be used to create an intentional lack of tonality or getting away from an obvious tonal center, which was a big part of what composers in the early 20th century were playing around with, because kind of it felt like everything has been done in terms of functional harmony and tonality. Like, well, what else can we do to expand and get more interesting? Well, what if we just stop making things so obviously need to be in a key? What if we just play with things that are, that you, when listening to it, it sounds more nebulous, it sounds more abstract. This is kind of, a, this is the impressionistic uh, style of music that was starting to become uh, a sound around that time. If you listen to composers like Brahms, from who was kind of the height of the Romantic era versus composers like Debussy and Stravinsky, you'll hear, Oh yeah, there's a huge difference in terms of they're not feeling there isn't there isn't this home base thing that that composers like Beethoven were just driving at home constantly, like hearing that tonic, uh, hearing that main key all the time, and and dancing around that. Well just kind of getting away from even knowing where that main key center might be is one of the things that the, the diminished scale was helping composers do. This is around the same time that these same composers were playing around with chordal harmony or harmony with chords that are stacked in fourths instead of stacked in thirds. I have a whole tutorial all about chordal harmony that goes deeper into that. So if that interests you, definitely check out that video. In jazz music and in improvisation, the diminished scale is thought of more as something that is used in tonality. It can be used in a piece of music that has a very obvious tonal center and that is just really clear functional harmony and it's mainly used to improvise over two types of chords and you can use it in other ways as well but really if there's a diminished seven chord you can play the diminished scale to improvise or, or compose melodies over that chord and it's also used to play melodies and improvise over the dominant seven chord and that creates kind of a certain type of sound over the dominant seventh chord that's an altered sound has a sharp nine it has a flat nine stuff like that so it's a really cool scale to break up um, how we might want to treat the dominant seventh chord make it sound give it some more tension so we went, when it resolves to something if it does resolve to something um, you get even more of a resolution when you resolve check out my video about 23 different scales that you can play over dominant seventh chords the diminished scale is one of them and i demonstrate all of those scales in that video we're going to get some practice playing over the diminished seventh chord and the dominant seventh chord using the diminished scale in just a bit but first let me show you the actual guitar patterns the guitar shapes the guitar scale forms those are all the same thing scale patterns scale forms scale shapes they're used synonymously so these diminished scale form patterns because this scale is symmetrical it can be so confusing how to map it out so i want to show you how i map it out and how i found uh my way around the fretboard with this scale and um it's quite odd because there are only two actual physical scale shapes of the diminished scale so i'm going to put those on the screen here right now so you see those two physical shapes now when we see a physical guitar shape if we've worked on that kind of thing before with other scales we can say oh cool from that lowest note to the highest note i can start just kind of playing up and down this scale the trick is with really any scale form and the way i talk about it in this whole scale series is do we know where the root is can we see it on the fretboard can we emphasize it can we hear it and with the diminished scale this becomes even more challenging and even more important otherwise we're just going to be lost in the nebulousness of the diminished scale which like we talked about is part of the value of it but we need to know where we are with the root so with these two shapes the reason there's two shapes is because it's a symmetrical scale and just goes whole step half step forever with these two shapes we want to actually think of it in five different places with the root at a specific in a specific different spot for each of those five different places so here on the screen now are the five different physical scale shapes and the physical scale shapes are overlapping a lot there's a lot of repeating of the same scale shape three of them are the same and then two others are the same but the roots are in different places those red notes are in different places and the way we want to practice this is using something that i've talked about a bunch in the other scale videos called the root to root method or the root to root exercise so we're going to start on the root and every root is going to be c we're going to play five positions all c diminished scale whole step half step version so i'm going to go up 
And when I get to another root, I'm going to repeat it. And you can pause and also repeat it or just repeat it and keep going. But don't pause or repeat on any other notes. So if I go up the, uh, the rest of the position, I have to come right back down and get to the root. So we're grounding ourselves on the root and getting it in our ears. And with the diminished scale especially, it's like really weird to get it in our ears. So this helps them a ton. But you want to play every note in the position. So after I come back down and land on that root we started on, you play everything below it and then come back up. And that's the root to root method. That's the root to root approach for practicing scales. And it's how I talk about it in this whole skill series, all these lessons. So we're just going to do all five of the shaped, all the five of the positions of this scale this way. So this is one of the two scale physical shapes, but we're treating the root in different places every time. I'm just going to demonstrate that through all five shapes now. I might do it a little fast just to get through it as an example, but do it for yourself as slow as you need to go and just enjoy the process. Okay, this next shape is the same physical shape as the last one, but we're treating the root in a different place within the shape. Next one is the same physical shape again a third time, but the root is once again in a different place within the shape. And the last shape is the same as the first one, but the root is in a different place. This allows us to actually see the root in terms of a chord uh, or dominant seventh or diminished seventh chord, depending on where we're trying to play it. So we can actually navigate the fretboard uh, you know, accurately over something and see the root in the correct place according to the harmony. Here's that last one. After you map out a scale like that, just choosing one of them and trying to just improvise around, don't worry about it sounding like great music or how you want to sound, but just to be able to play it in a non-linear way. So if we choose this one here, that is that third shape that was on the sheet. So just, you know, kind of scalarly, but also skipping around and switching directions a little bit just to improvise around with it to help get it in my hands and my view on the fretboard and my ears a little more. By the way, you can get these scale shapes totally for free. I have a, a scale download called the Printable Parent Scales PDF, and it has uh, these scales and a bunch of others that all most other modes and scales come from. So it's all the physical shapes uh, of a bunch of different scales, and you can get that with the link in the top of the description and all of these diminished scale shapes with the roots written out just like you see on the screen when I'm demonstrating them those are in that pack so I would if you're interested in having this mapped out is take each of those forms and play the be able to do the root to root with it really clearly and then just be able to kind of noodle so to speak with each of them as well knowing where the root is maybe come back to the root start on the root with your phrasing and and stuff like that and just kind of be able to play around with each of those then you're ready to try it over actual chord progressions and harmony which is what we're going to do next okay so what i have ready here is a loop of c major seven and then c sharp diminished seven this is using diminished seven as a passing chord because it goes to d minor seven next so it goes from the one chord to the two chord with a diminished chromatic passing chord in between that's tonicizing and resolving to D minor. And I talk all about that in the diminished chords tutorial. So check that out if you want more on that. The fourth chord in the progression is just a G7 chord. So we can use this progression, which is actually very, very common. Or pieces of this are super common. It's going resolving back to C after that and just looping. So I have that loop ready to go. And what we can do is obviously practice the diminished scale over the diminished chord itself. And we'll practice a C major scale over the C major seven. We can just use the C major scale over the D minor seven, or you can think of it as D Dorian, either way works equally well. And then over G seven, the, the key that it comes from is just C major. So you can keep playing C major for that. We're gonna do all these things. Or you can think of G mixolydian, either way, same thing. Uh, some people think of 
just the tonic, main tonic scale. Some people do think off each chord like that. Uh, so either way, but also we'll take it another step and work on playing the diminished scale um, off of the G7 chord because these are the two ways you can apply it in improvisation and composing over chords off the diminished chord or off a dominant seventh chord. So let's go in and try these steps out for improvising and have you give it a try. The first thing I would do is actually just play a, the tonic major scale, the parent scale of the whole key over this, just to hear how it works. And even during that diminished chord, if you kind of skate over it, this is what most people are doing when they're improvising, not necessarily nailing the chord that uh, is changing underneath all the time and more just thinking broadly, melodically in the key. So let's do that on purpose here. There's nothing wrong with that, but then it'll also give us a taste for when we do nail that little change that might be helpful to play the harmony of the diminished scale over the diminished chord, you'll hear even more acutely how it affects the music. So let's just play with C major and I'll say, let's play with this C major shape. So that's in the fifth and fourth position on the fretboard. Here's our loop. And don't worry about um, how you know awesome it sounds or your musicality of it. You're just, we're drilling. playing with that C major. You can also just do C major pentatonic, which is the same thing as A minor pentatonic. So. So, so works surprisingly well, right? This is how most improvisations are happening or guitar solos, like where that tension in the background is there and it helps the harmony move along, but um, we forgive the dissonance of, you know, not the right scale working over the chord because it just resolves so nicely and it resolves so so quickly too. We're not sitting on diminished forever. If it was just sitting on diminished the diminished chord forever and we played C major, it wouldn't feel right, but it's because it's diminished in the tonal context of uh, playing with functional harmony in the key of C. So that works quite well. So get comfortable with that first, and then we're going to be able to appreciate how awesome it is to nail the chord when and if we want to. It's not better, it's not worse, but you, if you get to that, you can choose to do it sometimes, choose not to do it sometimes. So the way I like to ease into this is to take two strings. We'll take the middle two strings and say, what's the C major scale on just those two strings? What's that? C sharp diminished scale on just those same two strings and then C major scale on the rest of the chord. So just that one chord, you try to change the scale appropriately on just those two chords. So check this out. C major, diminished, back to C major. So after you do that on just two strings, then you can try to start doing it on more strings and more strings and all six of them in one position if you can. Here's an example of that. So just playing around with that and just trying to hit the right scale at the right time. C major mostly, and then that diminished scale during that diminished chord. Another thing that I work on a lot in a context like this is playing just chord tones. I have other videos all about that, so I won't demonstrate that here, but check them out and I'll put links in the description to a couple of my videos all about improvising with chord tones to map out the good notes of the chords when we're trying to improvise. Now let's treat G7 with the diminished scale. And you can do this by thinking of the diminished scale off of the three, of the chord or the five of the chord or the flat seven of the chord or the flat nine of the chord. Those are all a minor third apart and the scale is symmetrical. So you can think off of one of those chord tones. Don't, don't play it off of G, play it off of a half step up from G or off the third of G. So the third of G is B. So if we take one of those shapes from our scale PDF that you can download if you want to, um, and we say, well, B is the third, I'm gonna play the diminished scale, the same physical shape that I was doing over here, 
I'm gonna so I was doing the diminished scale here to get the C sharp diminished. Well, a half step up from that, same physical shape, thinking of B as the root of the diminished, is going to be how we apply diminished to G7. Okay, so let's listen to that over this progression. That's going to be C major 7, C sharp diminished with the C sharp diminished scale, D minor with the C major scale or D Dorian, and then G7 with the B diminished scale over it. It's going to give the G7 quite a bit of dissonance and be very odd, but then it's going to resolve to C after that. <laughs> running through the scale fast and hearing it resolve to the C. So it's just a flavor to get used to, to experiment with, to see if you want to use it, to see if you want to, to see if you like it. And it's at least very cool to know about the theory of it. And it's used widely again, a lot in jazz improvisation, um, but could be used to great effect in any, any other aesthetic of music as well. If you're just getting started uh, playing with scales and switching them according to, you know, chord by chord by chord, one of the great things to do is just take it out of time and try to play eight notes per chord, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then switch to the closest note possible of the next new scale. So here's back to C major. And then I'll go to the B diminish. And then back to C major. And now with C sharp diminished. And now back to C major and now B diminished, back to C, right? So I'm doing it out of time, eight notes, and then having those moments of where's my closest note. That's what helps the most, doing that exercise a ton, then trying to improvise it will help you see all those connections. You can get all these diagrams and a bunch of other scales with my printable parent scales, PDF pack that's totally for free. You can download that. It's just a simple PDF with seven different scales that are the parent scales that most other scales and modes come from. So getting those physical shapes down will make it way easier to learn other modes or apply them in different ways. So it's seven different scales and it shows the five positions of each of those scales, just like we talked about in this video. And the diminished scale is one of the scales in there. So you can start working on it with the diagrams in front of you, which is pretty handy. You can get that totally for free with a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Well, you might be wondering more about diminished chords now, so I highly recommend that you next watch my diminished chords tutorial. It's super thorough. It says everything you need to know. One-stop shop about diminished, diminished chords, how to work on them on the guitar, how they're used, how to improvise with them. And then if you watch that one, you'll know about the scales and the chords, and it's just really cool stuff. So that's what I recommend watching next. There's a link in the description to it, or there should be a link on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube that you can click on to go straight to that video. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson is about finger picking, and it's an intermediate finger picking lesson about what do you do next, next steps after you have maybe a beginner grasp on finger picking and finger picking patterns. It's going to be a fun lesson. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.